So let's look at timed encryption. Is it possible for us to set a time for uh, encryption to take place so that we know that if we send some encrypted uh, data to the other side that they won't be able to decrypt it within a certain time? So what we do is that we define a, a task, a work task to do, or a, a proof of work. So one way of doing this is to be able to take a seed value and then to be able to iterate around a given number of, of times. So if we think about it, then what we have is we have Bob here, and over here we have Alice. And what we want to do is to make sure that Alice will take a certain amount of time or work to be able to do the task. So the problem that we have is that if we give Alice a task and it's possible to do that task in parallel, such as with a GPU, then she'll be able to significantly reduce the task down uh, using more and more uh, processors. So we need to find a task for Alice to perform to make sure that she can't paralyze uh, the task. We need something that's sequential. So one way of doing this is to have a seed and then to take a hash such as SHA-256. And then what we do is we take the output of that hash and feed it again and we go around a certain number of iterations. In this way, we can send the resultant hash. So let's say that uh, we have iterations as a variable. Then we will send Alice the seed value, the resultant hashed value, and the number of iterations that she has to uh, do to be able to derive the same key as us. So we'll take the very last uh, hash value and we'll create an encryption key from there. With encryption key, we'll take our data and we'll encrypt to be able to create our cipher. So then Alice must take the seed, go through and hash that for the given number of iterations before she can find out the key. The good thing with this challenge is it's not possible to run this in parallel because every, uh, every input is, is dependent upon the output from the last stage. So it's not possible for Alice to, to run this in parallel. She must run through the same operations as us. So what we do is that we define the time that we want Alice to complete the, uh, the task. It could be one day or one year. And then we estimate the amount of time it will take Alice to calculate one iteration of the, the hash. We then determine the number of iterations that is required. So perhaps we could perform the same operation for the same amount of time, if we know that Alice has the same uh, computing system that uh, we have, and we can send that over. Okay, so that's, that's our hashing uh, method there. And here are some codes to be able to implement uh, this. So in this case, uh, we derive a certain amount of time, and we'll generate a hash key by going around the loop until the timer finishes. And this way, we can actually find out uh, uh, the, the key, the time it will take Alice to be able to compute the key. Then from there, uh, we can then uh, encrypt with our key and with our key seed. And then on the other side, we can decrypt the key using a certain number of iterations. So if we look at our uh, web page for this, here's an example here. 
So the code I've used is just the code that you saw there. Okay, so we'll just uh, take that as an example. So in this case, it will do 0.1 of a second, and it has the seed. And it will go around the loop until it generates for 0.1 seconds uh, the uh, hashed value based on the seed. So in this case, we end up with this as our encryption key. And then we put it into the Fernet uh, method, which will do an AES encryption for us. And we end up with our cipher. If we then use this number of iterations to go around the seed value, then we can result in the same key and be able to decrypt the, uh, the value. Okay, so that's hashing. So the problem with this method, though, is that it's going to be very costly for us to be able to compute this value because we have the same computation as, uh, Al as Alice does. So one way that we can overcome this is was created by Ron Rivest. And with this method, what we do is that we square a value a given number of times. The advantage of this is the complexity is log n and the, the, the uh, is, a, is a factor of the complexity where on the other side it's n squared. So Alice has a considerably more of a workload in order to be able to complete the puzzle than we have in actually creating it. So in this way, we can actually create an easy puzzle with a defined workload, but then Alice will have to complete the task in the, the time that we've actually uh, defined. Okay, so in, in the method, what we do is we select two prime numbers, P and Q, and we calculate N, just like RSA. Then we calculate phi, which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1. Next, we create a random encryption key, and we take our message, and we create our cipher message. From there, we then select a random value A and a difficulty level T. So the difficulty level will define how difficult it is for Alice to be able to compute uh, the key. And that will relate to the amount of time that she'll, that she'll take to complete the task. Okay, and then we calculate this value uh, to be K, our key, plus A to the power of 2 to the power of T and mod N. Okay. And then we send the value of n, a, t, uh, the, uh, the ciphered or the, the key with the workload, c, k, and also the cipher message. After that, Alice then takes this. She takes uh, the key that, we've, that she's been given and then she subtracts it by the a value to the power of 2t mod n. And this has a certain difficulty. The higher the value of t, the more difficult it will for the system to be able to compute this value. This is quite a difficult calculation. Bob, though, on the other hand, just has to compute 2 to the power of t mod phi, and then calculates the b value. So it's actually quite easy for him to find this, this value but it's much more difficult because uh, Alice is using this, uh, this, this power uh, value. Okay, so here's, a, here's an example here with some code, and I think we have an example here. So we'll just try this one.
Okay, so this is with our squaring. So the code we've used in this case is this. So this is the calculations that we saw before in there to be able to derive the key. So we'll just give it a quick try and we'll only do it to a, a T value of one. So it's fairly simple. So we'll try that out. And there's what we get. So I've selected a P value of uh, this value, this prime number, and there's a Q value. So the N value is this. I've selected an A to be this. T is, is one. So there's our CK and there's our encrypted. When Alice receives, she is able to recompute by subtracting the values uh, that we saw from there. And she has a guess at the key, and you can see that she's managed to decrypt it correctly. Okay, so in this way, we have a much less workload to be able to create the puzzle as Alice will have to be able to compute it. And finally, I'll show you a little example of how we could crack the, the puzzle without actually knowing the, uh, the number of iterations. So in this way, what we'll do is we'll take what the cipher is, and if we know what the seed is, we'll go round a loop recalculating the hash value is time and then we'll see if it raises an exception when we try to uh, decrypt it. If it does we'll ignore it, if it doesn't then we've actually found the key. It's the way we use to, to crack a key. Okay so we'll give that a try. So here's an example here. We'll just go ahead and what it's doing is it's going around the loop until it finds the key that will work. This takes a little minute and then it's there. So it's managed to go around 76,333 iterations before it actually found the, the key. Okay, so in this way we can actually determine uh, an, an amount of work uh, that uh, Alice will do. The problem that we have, of course, is that Alice could have a fairly fast processor which could compute uh, the value uh, faster than our estimation, but she's like, there will be likely to be a cost in there for her. Okay, so that's an example of timed encryption.